All right, we are back with episode 76 of the Ricky Henderson Podcast, the greatest of all podcasts, GUAP. I'm your host, Alex Espinoza, with my co-host, Dr. Hal Gordon. <laughs> and Hal is officially starting his new job, folks. Last week, he... He, right. he, I, I think what? he did you hang up your red and white uh jersey thing like is it where is that thing now <laughs> uh it's i think it's, it's somewhere in my closet but uh yeah you know if if anyone's looking for uh for a a, a valuable piece of uh oakland uh, baseball history uh you know we can start the bidding at a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can just send it to Cooperstown like the cell the cell shirt, you know. It, you just be immortalized. That's uh, right. Yeah. But yeah. uh so yeah. Is, is, it has $100,000. I'll send it to. <laughs> it's priceless in yeah. the Hall of Fame there. Yeah. But uh so it's been like a few weeks since we did one of these and you were halfway <laughs> across the world <laughs> in, in that time. Um for, where did you go first of all? I saw you were in Indonesia and Japan. Where did you go? Yeah, I went to uh, I went to Indonesia and uh, and then I I went to Japan as well, Tokyo on the way back. Um, and I mean, both places were really cool. You know, it was I had some time before I was going to start my job, um, so you know I decided to just take a trip, uh, which is really funny because uh, whenever I post anything on uh, Instagram, uh, you know, I, uh, a lot of my uh, wife's friends would then text her and be like. You got you're in Indonesia, and my wife's like, "No, I I have a job." I'm st- oh, you myself. went solo? I didn't realize you went solo. Oh, I thought you I were there by myself. Oh no, oh yeah. So, uh, so they were like, "Dude, I don't know, I don't know about this husband taking taking across <laughs> Asia without you. What the heck?" That's was, awesome. Um, well, well, that's sweet. You got like two completely different like things, you know? Yeah, like, really, really two different ends of Asia. Uh, yeah. You know, and you know, I to avoid this from becoming, um, you know. Hal talks about uh, a, a trip, <laughs> uh, which you know I, I uh, have good memories of, but uh, I don't know if it's that compelling uh, of uh, a podcast material. I, I will uh, tell you about my experience uh, at the Tokyo Dome, yeah. which was wild. It was it was so different. So I mean, you know, a huge portion of this uh, has to do. I think I think like if you want to understand Japanese culture, go to a baseball game. Uh, it, there's there's two ends of the spectrum i think um which are very different from uh the us sort of sports culture and just like culture in general like you know so first of all like japanese culture is you know it's very polite it's very rule oriented yeah um and uh so that sort of manifests in a lot of the ways in like the cheering uh culture so um you know, first of all, like, so I went to, a, it was a, it was a, it was a Tokyo Giants game versus, uh, I think the Yokohama DNA uh, Bay Fighters, I think is the team. Uh-huh. I think it might be the team that, um, what's his face? The, the. Otani? Fuji? The, 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 the American who beat up. Uh, oh, Trevor but, Bauer? <laughs> but he didn't pitch. Uh, but, um. Yeah. So, I mean, so the players, I'll say the players, like, so there's only, there's only a few slots that are allotted for foreigners. So most players are Japanese, Um, but there'll be a couple foreigners on each team. Uh, And I forget the the guy in the giants. He was some, uh, you you know, he's some journeyman minor leaguer who played a few games in the major leagues for the Rangers and the Brewers or whatever. But then he just, you know, he's like the starting uh he's the yeah. starting shortstop for the giants so he's um but he you know he's he gets to pick his walk-up music and it was funny he was picking like you know really explicit rap uh you know with like n-words and stuff uh but they they didn't you know yeah, it wasn't the radio <laughs> because no one knows english so they don't care <laughs> that was funny but but the 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 main thing you'll notice is is the outfield is the se- cheering section. So you know it's like a sold out game. Uh, yeah. You know, it's fifty thousand people in this in this dome built in the eighties. It it felt a lot like the uh, Humphrey the Humphrey Metro Twins. Game. Yeah, where the yeah. Twins were. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, but the entire outfield is supporter section. Three fourths of the outfield is the home team supporter section. One fourth is the away team supporter section. Uh, and so, you know, they're divided, but 
and and uh, you know, and they're standing the entire game, but still eminently polite. So, <laughs> uh, you know, at the before the game started, the the Bay Stars fans sung their songs. You know, they had about maybe ten minutes of them singing their songs, and they'd like you know they had drums, they had trumpets, they had flags, and then they stopped. And then when they stopped, then the Giants fans stood up and took ten minutes and sang all of their songs. Now they didn't sing over each other. They never sang at each other. They yeah. were just singing about their teams. Just no animosity. No like. No, there like, wasn't animosity. Yeah. And, and yeah. so much so that when 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 the Giants were up to bat, the Bay Star fans sat down and were quiet and let the Giants fans uh, do their chants and their songs, which were great. You know, they're long songs. I really loved that. You know me. I love a good chant at a baseball. <laughs> right? so, I mean, I was really pumped. We took, we took a couple innings and we stood out in the outfield and sort of soaked it up. Uh, but as soon as uh, the giants, uh, you know, were pitching and the away team uh, was batting, all the giants fans sat down and were quiet and allowed the away fans to do their chants and cheers. And I couldn't imagine, right? Like yeah. if you went <laughs> You know, if you went to like a Yankee Stadium and we we took like two thousand A's fans to Yankee Stadium and started chanting, they would throw yeah. garbage at us. Yeah, and get us. But so, right now, other than that, uh, like if you weren't in the outfield, you would you would not. There was no standing up. So the 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 bottom of the first inning, the Giants hit a grand slam and my friend and I as the balls in the air were oh shit standing up like oh yeah. like, we didn't really care who was going to win well my my friend's a, a San Francisco Giants fan so I think he was more excited about the Giants but uh but like oh and we it was a grand slam and you know like the the outfield is going nuts everyone's clapping but we look around and we're the only people standing like even like slam. even afterwards, even like when even they got it. I was oh. like, what the this is so weird. Uh and then I'll say this. The the other thing is like is like they sell so they sell noisemakers. Uh and a lot of people have noisemakers, right? <laughs> um and they look like this. So if you're watching on YouTube, they look like this, but if you're listening, it's like two mini plastic mini bats uh, yeah, with like a baseball rope tie. Flash and so I chance. got them and I was like, well, these must be, you know, these, must be, do, 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 do. you know, like, I mean, how are they going to make noise? Right. Cause I want to make some noise. Yeah. And I realized the way that they make noise is you just bang them together like this, That's which what... is the same, like a volume as clapping. Yeah. I can't, I can't it's even no hear lot louder than clapping. <laughs> I can't even because hear you, it. <laughs> you want to be, it's a polite, it's a, it's a polite noisemaker. It's like a, it's like a plastic golf it's clap. It's <laughs> the golf clap of noisemakers. Well, what about the hot dog vendors? Did you like tell oh, them? Oh yeah. Hey. Well, so there wasn't a hot dog vendor. There's great food. I have to say that really good food, um, cheap, you know, it was cheap. Oh, the other thing was like, terror. It's very difficult to get s- s- tickets because it's, uh, they don't, uh, it's illegal to scalp tickets. It's illegal to sell tickets um, above the price. And, you know, for like, I always thought of Japan as this like really advanced technological country, but like uh, in Japan, like everyone's like you pay with, for, with everything with cash, like, like almost everything they prefer cash, unless it's like a really expensive restaurant bill or something. Um, and so uh, all the tickets are paper. There's, they're not electronic tickets. So, you know, you, if you go, you go, you go on StubHub, like there's StubHub, you'll like, look, there'll be like eight tickets for sale and you have to pick them up from like a, a post office. <laughs> like, like, so, so it pays to like go old school, like go to the ticket tickets. office. Yeah, yeah. And, and they only charge us the face value. Uh, it, so that was weird. Um, I bet there's not dynamic pricing where they just jack no, the, it up. Yeah. There's no dynamic pricing. The, yeah. the food was cheap. I mean, like the, the, the. You know, it wasn't it wasn't like super cheap, but like it was it was definitely cheaper and better than what you'd get in America. Um, and then all the all the uh, vendors are like are like high school or college age girls in like skirts <laughs> and they're oh, selling beer. They're selling beer or highballs, which is like whiskey and uh, soda, which is what they really like in Japan. 
and you know, so yeah, I talked to a couple vendors. I gave one to my baseball card, but uh that's so awesome, dude. Uh but like, you know, clearly uh you know, I think they're pro I wouldn't be surprised if they're getting commission, but in in tipping is like considered rude in Japan. And so uh uh, I don't, I don't know if I would do well as a vendor in Japan. I'd be like, <laughs> which, you know, what? I learned that though, whenever I'd vend Otani games and there's a bunch of Japanese tourists at the Coliseum. Yeah. I knew I was never going to get a tip. From tip. Yeah. It was just not or part like, of the I culture. Yeah. Like, oh, here's 50 cents. I'm like, yeah. here's my fucking. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I think as a consumer, I really liked that there's no tipping, I think. Um, but as a vendor, definitely that would have been a big bummer, but uh Dude. Um, yeah, yeah I, I love I love seeing I love seeing uh, baseball in other countries, dude. It's like a whole different experience. I've been to Panama a couple times, and it's just yeah. the fan, fans are so much more into it and just uh, just going nuts. Like after every strikeout or every, you know, yeah. it's like everything's a bigger deal. I, I can't. Yeah, agree. it was it was cool. You know, I mean, I think what was cool too was going to a country that is so different, like culturally yeah. so different. You know. Um, people some people speak some english but a lot of people don't speak any english uh and you go and you you know it's it's something that you immediately i like you know you i understood everything you know i was like i you know i had to convert kph to miles per hour for pitches but you know <laughs> uh but you know i was we were sitting next to some bay star fans who had a little bit of english and i was able to sit there and like talk about the game with them you know i was saying they need to take their picture out you know they need to do this you know um you know and uh, i think that was it's like a cool cultural experience so yeah uh, you know highly recommend if if you go to japan well first of all highly recommend going to japan but if you do go to japan make sure to buy tickets to a baseball game do it in advance we had so much fun we wanted to go to uh, another game the next day a swallows game but like i said it was to too hard to get tickets like we couldn't yeah. find tickets the day before uh so you know plan you know i and plan on i would i would recommend sitting in the outfield you know plan on going to maybe i would even say two games it's so cool it's really fun it, it, they didn't have a seventh inning stretch but between the sixth and seventh inning uh a j-pop star went out to center field and like sang a song and it was like, <laughs> it was like I mean, there was no, it wasn't, there wasn't like a light show or stages or anything, but it was like, it was like halftime show. Yeah. It was like a concert. And like, yeah. yeah like it was like <laughs> yeah. a big act. And like, there was like definitely some like girls there who were like trying to, you know, who were like swooning big time. You're like going nuts. Yeah. yeah. Going nuts. It was a funny, it was a funny experience, man. It was cool. Um, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think that with that love letter to baseball, uh, I think we have, uh, we have less fun things to talk about, uh, which is uh, baseball back in America. And uh, the <laughs> we have not. Get off the American League Rookie of the Month, baby. The A's are coming back, baby. Lawrence Butler hit two dingers. You know, the young guys are here, you know. <laughs> yeah, and those are great. You know, it's really, I think, it's that's some really bittersweet stuff, you know, because these guys are going to be uh las vegas a's you know and uh, i think it's yeah. i didn't even know if they're gonna make it that far because there's still i think there's still a whole another cycle of players who's gonna play for them before they get to the stadium like if these guys are still on the a's in 2028 20, 29 that'd be like borderline amazing you know? oh you know what yeah, that, <laughs> they're gonna be i mean who who even knows where it's they're like gonna... a forgotten generation of players but it's yeah weird, you know and, and i'll say this you know i think um i think You've been we've been able to sort of see on on Instagram and and Twitter, um, Zach Geloff's family seem awesome. Like, yeah, they seem to get it. They seem to be. They're always wearing last dive bar stuff in the stands, um, and you know, um, their extended family when they came to DC because I think they're all from from Delaware. Yeah. You know, they, they, the entire Geloff family was there. And I think there was definitely maybe, you know, some people in uh, with some cell apparel amongst their family as well. So, you know, um, I, I doubt uh, I doubt any of the Geloffs are listening. But uh, but man, I, I if if Zach Geloff ever plays with Las Vegas A's, you know, I'll 
root against the, I probably won't care, but I'll root against the Las Vegas A's, but I'll always be just a huge Zach Gala fan. Um, you know, it's, it's that those guys are cool. And uh, Lawrence Butler, he seems yeah. like a, just a cool guy who's happy to be there, you know? And um, so, yeah. yeah, if this was like a normal situation, it'd be kind of cool. Be, you could kind of start to see it like, you know. Yeah, you can start to see the guys that they're going to trade in a couple years when they're good. <laughs> yeah, you're like ready to get your heart broken again, you know. You can yeah. See the, yeah, so yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I've got a couch where my heart is now. So I'm trying not to. Yeah. It just it stinks. Yeah, I mean, like Jordan Diaz and Esteri Ruiz. And like Soderstrom has been pretty awful since he came up. But like, you know. I like you could see like the next core coming, but yeah, it's not uh, really what people are talking about right now. I mean, I like I think the next thing we should mention is the the billboards, the massive billboards that were put up uh, this past weekend at the at the Coliseum. The uh, the guys at Last Dive Bar started uh, started up a website called SummerOfCell dot com, and if you guys haven't heard, uh, if you go to SummerOfCell dot com, you can basically pledge. You can say, hey, if the A's had new ownership, um, would you buy season tickets? You yeah. can do these different options and basically it becomes a dollar amount and they're trying to show like, you know, if John Fisher left, this is how much money they would get so far. It's about $14 million. It's a uh, f- between 1,420 people. And I think it's kind of like the Daniel Snyder effect. Like we've seen it with the Washington commanders. They sold Daniel Snyder, sold the Washington commanders. And now yeah. like the, the commander sold all their suites, all their season tickets. Uh, there's just so much interest around. I don't know if the A's, uh, the Oakland A's fans will ever get that chance. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I think this is an important thing to do. You know, it's an important, it's an important thing. You know, I would encourage if you're listening to the podcast and you haven't gone to summercell.com, go there and pledge what you'd, what you'd buy. Obviously, you know, uh, you know, try and be honest. Uh, we're not going to actually collect that money from you, but, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but it's, I think it's an important thing to do just to document you know, part of the interest in the A's and, and, uh, you know, tell your friends, tell your you know, other season ticket holders to do it. Um, and just to, just to sort of know, boy, if, if they figured out a way to, to give us an expansion team or a different team or some kind of team, you know, we'd be there. Uh, you saw that, uh, I think that the mayors said, uh, that if the A's want to stay past their, uh, past their their lease for yeah they would you know the major league baseball would have to either like leave the a's name in oakland or promise an expansion team so but i think i think uh major league baseball will tell them to get lost and oakland will tell the a's to get lost and who knows where they'll play i mean they may honestly they may end up playing in san francisco which yeah i've seen that i I I hope i hope i I can't even I can't I imagine that. Go, I can't. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I mean, fuck them. Yeah. So, but I just think it's so funny, like how creative, like yeah, like the sell the team, the reverse boycott, the sell shirts, like around you know the All Star game at the Giants Park, uh, even down at Dodger Stadium. Like, I I really hope like ESPN makes a thirty for thirty at some point about this, and like yeah, that'd be great. And these bill- I think- like I can't believe they, they let the billboard I can't believe the billboard operators were like okayed that for them to be at I, the Coliseum. Yeah. I def- I've heard through the grapevine that some other billboard uh, uh, people not in Oakland have not have thought oh, you can't tell Doris to get her kid, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the guys in Oakland they don't care. Dude, it's it, great. I, yeah, I thought it was in Sacramento too. So I mean, yeah. they're they're yeah. they're making they're making their voice heard. I think. It's I think. Hilarious. I think. I think. I you know we'll we'll be. I think the 68s will probably be releasing more information soon. But um, I think there'll be one sort of last last hurrah, possibly the, the Saturday, the last Saturday, the, the 23rd, 23rd, right? Yeah. Which which may be which I think we we may not be hosting it at the Coliseum. We may be encouraging an actual boycott that game. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I saw the, something on Reddit too. Some guy's trying to organize a big tailgate and like everybody just tailgates and doesn't go into the. Yeah. Tailgate. Yeah. So we're still trying to figure out what's possible, I think. Uh, but, uh, but I would say don't buy your tickets to the 23rd game yet. Uh, you know, we may, we may uh, be having fun. You know, I think, I think where I'm at, you know, well, 
tell me tell me what you thought you know we we finally heard from john fisher yeah. although we didn't actually hear from him kind of yeah we, we, we had a puff him. piece uh uh by uh this coddled billionaire has decided that he's only willing to speak to a, a tv anchor uh off you know like on the record but not on camera um and you know he said uh he said some nice things about ace fans you know we're very dedicated we're passionate uh but you know it just just he he tried maybe and uh you know he's he's sorry it didn't work out what it what, what was your take alex how'd you feel about reading that uh well so first of all like his first interview was with mick acres of las vegas uh oh, yeah yeah review journal and that paper is pretty much just like they're like it's pretty indistinguishable from their pr staff at this point it seems like they're in bed together for sure you know yeah, yeah. and um i mean that's Which, another... like, listen i, I want to say one thing about mick acres People give him shit. And sure, there's definitely some pieces he's written that have been kind of fucking dumb. But if I was a, you know, if I was a, a, a beat reporter for the Las Vegas newspaper, I'd be pretty excited if a baseball team was coming to my town, right? Yeah. I'd want to be, I'd be like, hey, maybe I'll be the beat reporter. Maybe I'll get to go to all the games. So, <laughs> you know. Well, he's like a transportation guy, I think, technically, or transportation and sports business, I think, is his. Well, yeah, these small newspapers, they they don't have a lot of people. Yeah. 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 Well, I I just think that, you know, basically in 2021, he was privy to to all every time they, they made a visit. He had the story like basically yep. it seems like every time he went there, Cabo yeah. would say, call him and let him know just so yeah. everybody else would know. Yeah. And then I think back on April 19th um when the news initially broke he already had baked in quotes and it's like yeah. if you're a real journalist you don't sit on you would have just reported it you wouldn't have waited till the a's okay you know so that's what that's where i'm kind of like uh you know like like i i think if that's you know, how you get that's if you had a line if you have J dave cavill and john fisher calling you and saying hey i'll do an interview with you i'll, I'll probably take it too but it's just hard to I, I don't know it's the the lines of journalism and pr are getting blurred hard here i think yeah. Um, so that's why yeah. I took his interview with a grain of salt. I, I do give him credit. He, that's the most I've ever just seen John Fisher say. Um, but you know, he said that they've, uh, they, you know, put the thing, um, put their relocation papers in. He's not going to sell the team. He feels bad. It was his decision. So I, I feel bad for ACE fans that I took this away from them. It was my team. So it was my first hint of accountability he's given. So I, I did like that, but there wasn't much pushback. And then when I was watching that Raj Mathai interview, like I only got like a, the 30 seconds into it. And when Raj was like, John did not ex uh, agree to have himself filmed or, or like recorded on audio. I was like, I just stopped watching it. I was like, well, dude, then like, what's, it's just, uh, I, I don't know. Like, I don't understand like a, why a middle reliever gives him a home run in the sixth inning. He's got to talk to the media, but John Fisher, he doesn't feel like he needs to talk to the media for making this huge decision. I, you He's know, I billionaire, like, come on, dude, get some balls, you know, like, come on, man. truly get some fucking balls. Yeah. Get some fucking balls. John, if you're going to take up. away this, yeah. Yeah. this team from a fucking community, grow some balls. Yeah. I mean, it, and I also think, um, I, I was pretty disappointed in that interview. I think there was not, uh, you know, clearly, and I think Raj had explained that he had spoken to John on the phone and John had told Raj his side of the story. I think John Fisher feels hard done. He feels like, you know, he's just, he's an investor and he tried, he's trying to make his investment work. And this is clearly the best thing for his investment. And, and, you know, the, the Oakland didn't do it and he's sorry, but whatever. And, you know, fine. But like, this is, a, this is a community and, and I think, I think Raj, we didn't learn jack shit. You know, we didn't learn. Yeah. Jack shit. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Raj doesn't have to take that interview. You know, he doesn't have to encourage that interview. If he's not going to allow him to push back, you know, if he's not going to allow him to be, yeah. you, you know, John Fisher has, you know, Catherine Akers to do his bidding. He's got, he's got the best PR people that money can buy to do his bidding. He does not need 
some news anchor to do his bidding. So yeah, I thought it was pretty disappointing, but yeah, whatever. I mean, you know, it's sort of news in that he's saying he's not going to sell the team, but we knew he wasn't going to sell the team. So yeah, and also it, another thing I really took issue with was um, he came out and said, you know, the A's lost forty million dollars this year despite having a sixty million dollar payroll, but then Forbes did the math and they were like. Okay, well, technically, maybe the A's did, but they also got $110 million in free money, basically, from revenue sharing. So it's like they profited $70 million off. Show me the books. Show me the books. If you want to say that, show me the books. Yeah, and that's the kind of stuff that that, uh, that any journalist should be ready to challenge. And it wasn't challenged. Yeah. It's, I mean, to call that journalism i think from what you expect from your hometown journalists really disappointing and you know i i get it i get it like you could come you could show up to that interview and he's not going to be recorded so he's not going to answer any of the questions that you you know the the he's not going to give you an answer to any of the follow-up questions you have uh and you know like just don't do that interview just don't yeah. do it. Yeah, like if I Whatever. was Raj, if I was a TV guy and he said I can't, I won't be on camera, I would be like, okay, well, no interview then. I'm not going to just like, you know, spread this propaganda. Like, here's, yeah, I mean, I think we can sort of leave it at this. You know, it's just, we, we, we whatever. These, these, you know, this is the same sort of with Cavill when Cavill decided to rejoin Twitter for a day to gloat about <laughs> yeah that was I love we just got Schnitzer on. steel burning down yeah. like dude these guys are not these guys are doing this you know they, they're they're doing this so that they you know the 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 audience is their rich friends who are kind of like hey why are you being a dick and taking this team you know and <laughs> I'm going to protect my investment, you know, and and they're doing this to show that they're reasonable people with hearts. And it's the it's the the politicians that are, you know, that fucked up. And I will give them credit. California is when it comes to developing projects, California is dysfunction. It's yeah. why it's why it's impossible to, you know, why it's why the cost of housing is so high. You know, it's why. My wife and I are like thinking about leaving California because like we just can't imagine affording a house that is affordable, you know, that we would like to live in. And so it's, it's, you know, (laughs) there's, 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 you know, it's, they're, they're not the only, they're not the only, uh, uh, John Fisher and Dave Cavill are not the only like, uh, villains here, but they are the villains who made the decision they are the villains who who decided not to stay and fight for another couple years when frankly it seems like they could have gotten it done so you know they're they're jerks they'll always be jerks and uh you know i don't i don't know i don't know what they're trying to accomplish by this but they're 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 just trying to make sure that all the other rich jerks who own baseball teams know that uh know that uh that that it's the the problem of a diverse city councils you know and not not their white asses so yeah well I, yeah i also know I, I just think he just really confirmed my bias that these guys are just disingenuous like he's saying like oh well we can't put together a good team because our stadium sucks we're not having good revenue but if we get this new stadium in vegas we're for sure going to spend money on our team like i just don't believe it especially if they're in like a minor league park for three or four years uh, well, cap- yeah, they won't spend money then. Not yet. I mean, they, they're not going to have any revenue. So I, I just, the whole thing stinks. Like, they don't even know if it's going to be a dome or not. Like, I don't know. It's so half-baked. It's wild to me. But it's like, these guys are bulletproof. It's like, you can't really do anything, you know? No. It's an, and that's no, like the I mean, that's the part that sucks, you know? It's, it's like You know, it's just, it's like another just American story, man, of like, that, uh, just the deck the deck is stacked for billionaires you know yeah get you know I, you know we got to get uh, get bernie sanders on here i'm sure he'll, he could uh, he could rail against this shit but it's just it is it's stacked against billionaires it's stacked for people who already you know have a lot of shit and whatever man yeah i yeah. think you know i 
I think at this point, I floated this to a couple people. I'll float this on this podcast. I don't think, you know, it's viable, but I think, I think really at this point, you know, there's a lot of more opportunities to have fun with the Oakland community uh, at like, you know, at A's games while they're here uh, at roots games. I went to the roots game this weekend. I had a great time. There's a lot of good people there having a great time enjoying Oakland sports. But, um, you know, I think, I think if, if what we're trying to do is keep the A's in Oakland, I think the, the only sort of hope is that referendum uh, attempt to get a referendum in, in Nevada. And I think, I think for that to happen, A's fans would probably have to raise in the, the realm of hundreds of thousands of dollars, like 500, $600,000. You know, I think, I think it's partly a collective action problem. If all A's fan, you know, if we get all the A's fans in one room together and talk about it, <laughs> we might be able to get that amount of money. But, um, you know, and I think if there's people out there who are listening to this and are like, yeah, I want to organize, you know, you know, I want to organize, I want to, you know, flyer every A's game in the final uh, homestand to try and convince people to not renew their season tickets and instead send that money to to stadiums over or schools over stadiums. We might be able to get done. I think it's just going to be a ton of work. And, you know, I was talking to my wife about it, too. And it's like, this is sports. It's not supposed to be this hard. It's not supposed to, you know, this is not. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a political, to two political parties. Yes, sparring, it just makes me yeah. sick. It just makes me sick that this thing that, you know, I think the reason why I loved being a hot dog vendor was like, you just, you got to see so much joy in people's faces every day. You know, uh, you, I would trick little kids into having joy by giving them a, a card of mine because they're idiots and think that I'm famous. Uh, <laughs> just dunk but, it on kids here. Jeez. But, hey, but it's easy to dunk on five-year-olds. But like, you know, I mean, like just kids and like adults just being at a, at a sporting event. It's just so much fun and it's just so much joy and it's so much community. And, you know, when, when the A's would win, just people would just, you know, it just, it just, it sucks that it's become it sucks that it's become this political bullshit. And it's just like part of this thing where you just feel like these billionaires have all the power. And the only thing you could do is like, maybe we could organize our entire fan base to try and, you know, collect half a million (laughs) dollars to then maybe get a proposition, which might pass, which then who even fucking knows what would happen. You know, like it's just, they could be gone by then, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, these guys just, you know, I just, I just wish nothing but the worst for John Fisher and Dave Cavill. It's just, it's just horrible to see what they've done. So, yeah. And, and well, I was th- like, hey, if you get like a stadium full of people, like fifty thousand people, to give ten bucks each, that's there's your five hundred grand, dude. <laughs> this can't be that hard, right? <laughs> can't be that hard. You just have to go around with a yeah, easy, easy. It's no like problem. the church thing. Just go around with a yeah. wicker basket, you know, and uh, just get a little money from everybody at the end of the game, you know. Like I said, if if you know, if we put this podcast out and there's 15 people who DM me and are like, I want to dedicate the next <laughs> month of my life to collecting this money, I would love to help organize it. But it just, I just, it's just, yeah. well, I don't know if we can do it, you know? And, and the worst, like the, my worst fear is like, what if we collect $50,000, you know, like, and I've gotten $50,000 of people's money and that, that doesn't buy shit when it comes to a referendum, you know, it's yeah. whatever. Yeah. If you guys want to learn more about uh, schools over stadiums, we had their director of strategy, Alexander Marks, on last episode. So definitely check that out. He kind of lays out the the group's uh, vision and why they formed. And um, I, I mean, yeah, I I trust them. I think that they, yeah, I don't know, but well, you know, like one one thing I wanted to do. The season's wrapping up. Well, Let's before talk. before we do this, I wanted to oh. get one more thing off my chest. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my guy grinding my gears, yes. you know. So grind grind gears. away, Alex. Let's um, go, baby. Is is um like you were talking about how like the cards are stacked against the A's and or the A's fans, I guess. Yeah. Uh, not the A's. Um or Oakland A's fans is um this uh MLB relocation committee that Rob Manfred has appointed. 
Uh, it's like part of it is this Brewers owner who's trying to get a new ballpark, the Kansas City owner who's trying to get a new ballpark, and Phillies who I think they're fine. But it, it's just it, – it's like – I don't know. It's like a cop is trying to arrest another cop. Like he's not going to do anything, you know? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. It's exactly like that. That's a great analogy, Alex. It's like, it's like the the it's like the cops investigating when a when a when a police officer like, is. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah, like oh, he did no wrong here. Uh, yeah, this is good. Uh, we're good to go. We're it's no problem. The oversight work. committee. Yeah, yeah, right. he's doing good police work. He was he felt threatened. That that poor that poor Oakland City Council threatened threatened him. Um, yeah, I I think the you know whole, I think the whole people thing have, people yeah. have rightly said that that a uh, an expansion team would do better in Vegas. I think that's right. People have rightly said that Major League Baseball is leaving a ton of money on the table by not collecting an expansion team for Las Vegas. I think that's yeah. right. Um, uh, but at the end of the day. You know, that's just some money divided up 30 ways. What's worth what's worth hundreds of millions of dollars to every Major League Baseball owner is for them to when they say, hey, my 20 year old stadium, you know, which could which isn't even old enough to drink <laughs> needs, needs needs a billion dollar renovation. Yeah. You know, they want to be able to point to a city. They're going to point to Oakland and they're going to say, Oakland, look at Oakland there, but for the grace of God, go you. And if you don't give me a billion dollars, I'm going to do the same thing that we did to Oakland, which is, which is not even give them a warning, you know, which is to just one day say we're gone. You know, I won't call you up and ask for your best offer. I'm just going to one day say, Hey, I'm moving to Charlotte. Yeah. So, if anyone out there thinks that the MLB owners are going to save our asses, I got yeah. a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. I mean, <laughs> it ain't happening, man. Yeah. Yeah. MLB. I, I just wonder if MLB is eventually going to be ruined by money and like, I don't know. I mean, I, I maybe it already kind of is, but yeah, I mean, people can just be like, you know, the A's were there 55 years and they left. So we're going to leave after 25. Like, what's the big deal? You know, I, know. I you know, I think, Viewership and attendance is up because of the rule changes, but MLB is kind of over for me. You know, yeah. it it was a huge part of my life. Uh, you know, as a fan, as a kid, and and then you know, as a vendor, like I vended some other events, some football, but like you know, it was mostly baseball. And I went, I've been to been to a lot of baseball games in my life, and you know, I think it's just it's just over for me. Yeah, it just kinda, uh, it's it's I've hard to take it hard. off. Like the past couple of months, I've, I've I just kind of watched games here and there, which is wild to me. I pretty much was locked into the A's every year, but it's just not the same. And they're not good, you know. I mean, they're just yeah. it's tough to watch, you know. So um, it's they're the bad, and and anyway. like we said, you know, the the positive parts is it's hard to get excited about. It. You know, it's yeah. hard to get excited about Lawrence Butler because, you know, he's not. Uh, you know, I remember talking when I first first doing the hot dog gig. I started I started vending call in 2016. I first did the hot dog gig in 2017. And so that's when I started really talking to Ace fans. And I remember talking to them. And then, you know, and they weren't good 2017. Uh, but they were, you know, they were saying, you know, I had one fan who said, I'd much rather be an Ace fan than a Giants fan right now because, you know, the Giants, they're getting, they're old and they're, they're imploding. You know, we got all these young guys. Yeah, that's when Olsen and Chapman uh, were coming up and everything. Fun. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun to watch them. Uh, and it's not fun to watch. It's just not that fun to watch Zach Geloff. It's not that fun to watch Lawrence Butler because, because like, yeah, I mean, I guess they'll probably be in Oakland again next year, but like, it's gonna be. I don't know. Yeah, I it's hard to get invested in guys who you don't really, you know, I mean, it's like a short how, term. How much like worse is the attendance? deadline's gonna coming be, up and they're going to be gone anyway. So how it's much like, worse is the attendance going to be next year? You know, yeah. like, just, it just. So, speaking of the A's sucking, <laughs> I, if fans of this podcast will remember. <laughs> diehards, first, diehards. Diehards. <laughs> Not not the first episode this season. Uh, 
um, I suggested we do a war draft where we each draft. Now we drafted nine players each. <laughs> and um, we said the, whoever has the most war at the end of the season wins. Um, and uh, so, you know, um, I added up uh, some of the, the war from each of our nine players. I have the results. Let's go through them. This will be fun to remember what we thought about. This was, this was, <laughs> yes. this was I the can't wait to hear the I can't when we were excited the about Fujinami, yeah. when we were excited about, <laughs> you know, hearing uh, you know, potentially more uh binding votes for the for Howard Terminal. Um uh so um you know, some of these players no longer play for the A's, and some of these players uh, have accumulated stats for other teams. I've decided to count all of their stats <laughs> because, frankly, we need it. You yeah. and I need it. <laughs> we need any number we can get, positive or negative. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, do you remember the the first person you drafted? Um, Tony. No, I think uh, I honestly don't. I have no idea. You drafted Ramon Laureano. Woo! Yeah. He, you know. I have great news for you. He has 1.1 B war. Okay. Okay. That's that's almost at, at the end of the season. <laughs> I believe B war says two to three B war is starter. So he's almost as good as a starter. I picked Seth Brown. I believe I called him the big bopper. <laughs> he's still on the team. Let's go. <laughs> he's still on the team. And positive war, 0. 0.3 war. Your next pick. Last year's All Star, Paul Blackburn, one point six WAR. Okay, Great. almost two. He's almost a starter. Let's almost go. Almost a starter. <laughs> you got you. First of all, you're it. You're it. What are you at? Two point seven WAR. Holy moly! Pretty good. Pretty good. I picked Tony Kemp. Uh, negative point eight WAR. I'm now in the negatives. That's too bad. Oh man, Jesus. I am. I am now in the negatives. All right. My next pick, Shea Langoliers. Young guy, 0.64. All right. 0.6, positive. 6, positive. Pretty good. <laughs> Your next pick. Your next pick. Almaris, not Almaty, multiple Almaty. Almaty Stias. Aletimus, Aletimus, yeah. <laughs> Aletimus. Yeah. A swing and a miss. Yeah. Negative point nine war. Woo. Yeah. Well, he's it, been rough to watch. He can't even throw the ball across the diamond, dude. He does. Yeah. I've the first shortstop I've seen do consistent bounce passes, and I'm like, yeah. what are you doing, bro? It's, <laughs> it's not good. All right, your next pick, James Caprellian. Yeah. Negative okay. point three war. Oh Negative my gosh. Below replacement. Oh my god. Uh, but at least you didn't pick my fourth pick, who's by far the worst pick in this draft. Shintaro Fujinami. Oh my god. Poor Negative guy. two war. Negative two? Negative two war. Oh my god. So he's like a starter for the other team. <laughs> he's a starter for the other team. Uh and and that other team is whoever. Yeah, he's not. Not only is he not on the A's, he was he was pitching for the other team even before he got traded. So <laughs> after four players, you're at one WAR. I'm at negative two point four WAR. <laughs> <laughs> Fuji really killed the team there, dude. He yeah. really hurt. Me. All right, all right. Next, next for me, Jesus Aguilar. Negative no. point, negative point five WAR. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next for you, Ken Waldachuk. Negative 0.5 war. Oh, my God. Next These for guys. you, Jace Peterson. Negative 0.2 war. Jace Peterson. What was I thinking? I was, like, believing in their... For, the their, next their pick for me. And now this is controversial. Now, I'll, I'll say, this is controversial. Christian Pache. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't, he Never been this. played for the A's this season. However... <laughs> However, before he got injured, uh, because I, I don't think he's playing anymore, right? He's injured. 
I don't know. Last I heard, he's on the Phillies. I haven't really been paying attention since right? then. But let's 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 fact check ourselves. <laughs> I mean, we we after all, we are a, a, an A's news podcast. I, I thought I really picked Esteri Ruiz. I'm I'm surprised I did not. You did not. That's a shock. You did, I'm sorry. If you'd like to go back, too Big bad. Shock. Uh oh, he just came back. The Pate's last back, years. baby. He was, he, was, he, <laughs> he, got was in, he got injured in July. He's now back. He has plus one war for the Phillies. Now, I'm not sure I get to count that for my team. However, yeah, you kind of just need, we kind of need points here. Yeah, we, <laughs> I, I'm desperately in need of war. So I'm going to give it to myself. Your next pick. Uh, almost as bad as Diaz. <laughs> Drew Rushinsky. Oh, uh, that's that's got to be the worst pick of that. That's got to be my worst pick, right? Negative I don't know. Point eight war. Oh my god! I think he only made four starts. I was looking. He pitched eighteen innings, and he's yeah. basically been hurt all year. Poor guy. Yeah. Oh boy. I wrote a whole article before the season. I was like, oh, this is why Drew Shinsky is better than Fuji, because he never misses starts. And you were right. <laughs> you were right. But, Almost but, more than twice as twice as good as Fuji. But my, my reasoning was that he never misses starts. I was like, oh, this guy's so durable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah. not so much. My next, my next pick, Trevor May, who... I'll always remember him as the guy on the mound at the end of the reverse boycott game. So yeah. love him. Point four war. I thought he would be higher, honestly. I thought he's been doing decent. Highest yeah, paid but... player on the team. <laughs> <clears throat> My next pick, Zach Jackson. Point six war. <laughs> Dude, I think. I think our highest guy is like 1.5 so far. <laughs> uh, Paul Blackburn, 1.6, yeah. Um, Zach Jackson has pitched in 19 games this season. Uh, has not pitched since uh, since May. <laughs> so, um, but so far, uh, my third best player after the Phillies, Christian Pache and Shea Langoliers. Uh, your next player, Domingo Acevedo. Oof, brutal. Negative 0.7 war. I thought he was going to be the next use Mara Petit and be pitching like 70 games this year, but uh, he's been he's hurting too. Nine games. Yeah. <laughs> he's not pitched since May 3rd. Uh, my final pick, Nick Allen. Do you want to guess if he's positive or negative? I'm going to say negative. That dude can't hit, poor guy. <laughs> yeah. He uh, somehow has uh, has has with his batting average a point. He's got a, a 210 batting average, an OPS plus of 52. But I guess I guess his glove is good enough. He's zero point one more. <laughs> 52. He's replacement, baby. Who was my last pick? Or is that it for your, me? Your last pick. Danny Jimenez. Oh. Man. When I hear these names, I'm like, oh, what happened to the A's? He's been like up and down all year, too. Yeah. Yeah. Positive. 0. 0.2 war. So who won? So I, even with that one, that gimme, that one war from uh, from Christian Pache, Still negative, <laughs> negative 0.3 war total. <laughs> However, you had a lead, but your your last couple picks, all these relievers, did oh. not go well for you. Oh my god! Negative 0.5 war. Oh my Third god! Winner. I can't believe you won with a negative 0.3. It's not uh... going to change much because <laughs> they are no longer playing. Oh my god! Well, dude, I'm, I'm just looking right now at the list and. So Ryan Noto is actually number one on the team right now, 2.4. Yeah. JP Sears got 2.1. And Geloff's only been here for a couple of months. He's already number three on the team at 1.7. Pretty yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh man. I mean, well, I do not I, I do not feel good about that win. My that win was basically me just 
avoiding disasters uh, <laughs> and uh, except for Fuji uh, and somehow deciding that the Philadelphia Phillies Christian Pache was going to have an okay season despite being injured for most of it. It's so funny hearing those names. It's like they were last year. I was like, no, that was like three months ago. Four, <laughs> that was like four well, months ago. <laughs> because, I mean, it really does feel like last year because, and, you know, I think this is this is now almost an hour-long podcast uh, and we barely actually talked about the A's. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but, you know, it feels like so long ago because it was a time before the A's had said they were going to leave. So, yeah. you know, I think everything changed after that, you know, we fought hard. We tried to fight hard, um, with Vegas and the reverse boycott and that, you know, they just don't care. So, uh, like I said, you know, if a bunch of people think my idea of trying to raise a bunch of money for schools over stadiums is a good idea, reach out. But other than that, I think, I think, um, you know, Mark down the last the last Saturday home game. Uh, I I believe we may call for an actual boycott. If you've stayed, if you stayed. So pay for, for pay for parking, but don't pay for your ticket. Maybe. Oh, I, maybe. I, I, <laughs> might not even be at the Coliseum, but um, but I think that's what we're gonna try and do. Um, but yeah, take Bart. Yeah, take Bart, baby. I mean, take Bart anything. Yeah. Support public transportation, Alex. Come on. <laughs> Um, well, I, other yeah. than that, you know, I think, I think, uh, I think I'd like to, uh, thank you for, uh, encouraging us to do another episode. I'm sure we'll do one more or two more, uh, yeah, a couple one or two more before the season. Maybe we'll do a yeah, season wrap we'll, up pod we'll, we'll, or something. We'll do a wrap <laughs> up. We'll do a wrap up pod. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll invite, uh, the, the, the Texas Rangers, um, beat reporter, uh, uh, what what's his name? The the guy we had on at the beginning of the season, Texas Rangers, the Chronicle. Oh no, he's uh, he's he works for the Astros now, or the as who, who oh, was Matt the, Kawahara? Yeah, Matt <laughs> Kawahara. We got Matt <laughs> Kawahara. Come on, he was our <laughs> he was our intro pod. We can bring him on, and he can talk about how the Astros. Did. Even Matt got traded. Jeez, everybody got traded. <laughs> I mean, everyone got traded. <laughs> I mean, what a. Yeah, I, I want to say thank you to everybody. Um, the past few weeks, I've had a few people in different times like uh, come up and be like, yo, when's the next pod coming out? I want to hear the next pod. So uh, I appreciate the support. Uh, I know we're, I know we've been slacking, but uh, we're both busy guys with our full-time jobs and such and, now. Yeah, so, and, uh, and we, yeah. we, it's just depressing to think yeah. about it. <laughs> All uh, right. Well, thanks, Al. That was great, dude, and uh, hopefully see you on the twenty third. Yeah, we'll 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 see you on the twenty third, and we'll see um, we'll see you guys on the pod at least one or two more times this season. Absolutely. All right. Take care, y'all.